the Emirates. And there was a mosque that was named after Mary, the mother of Jesus. And they actually wrote it on the mosque. Even Steve Harvey, in defending his position, cited that incident. Can you imagine a mosque with the name Jesus on it? Yeah, the world could use a little bit more of that. When I named my youngest son and I gave him the name Ali, I never really understood exactly what I was doing. I had a feeling about it. But now when I look at this name right here, and it says, Mary, the mother of Jesus Mosque, uh, it kind of gives me a little bit more of the understanding. Maybe it was something I didn't quite know at the time, but now it's starting to make a whole lot more sense. That's his opinion. That's how grossly ignorant of the scripture my brother has been. But still on Oprah, let me show you something else that Oprah did because now we've heard too much of her talking about how that she believes in this. Okay? She now took it a notch higher and decided to speak to the most popular televangelist in the world by the name Joel Osteen. Are there many paths to get to the one God? Well, I believe, Oprah, that there, I believe that Jesus is the way to the one God. But I believe there are many paths to Jesus. You know, you don't know how Jesus would reveal himself to somebody. So I'm not into excluding people. Jesus can reveal himself to anybody. Does that mean that all people, all races, obviously, in your, your, your church, we see all people, all races. I can't imagine that you would have 16,000 people in there and none of them would be gay. So are gay people also included? Absolutely. Anybody is. You know, you know Oprah, we sometimes make a, I say we, maybe the Christian community makes a bigger deal out of, gay, out of being gay, but... Will a gay person be accepted into heaven? as you see it. Well, I believe they will. Well, I believe they will. Joe Austin also believed that Jesus is the way to the one God, but there are many paths to Jesus. Where are the many paths to Jesus? I want to know. I wish he, she had allowed our pastor, Joe Austin, to explain to us what those many paths to Jesus are. He was trying to give a very smart answer to that sensitive question. A question that should be answered unapologetically, straightforwardly. There is one way it's written in the scripture. There are no many paths to Christ. There might be many experiences how you encounter him, but that's not what he's talking about. He is actually saying the same thing that all of them have said in a totally different way. That smart way of answering the question is not what we need in this time. And I don't have any problem with Joel Austin. I like him as a person, but a time, the time has come for Christians to start hitting the nails on the head. Straight answer, straight cut. Don't try to appeal to anybody. Don't try to please anybody. The fact that you have a lot of homosexuals in your church does not make it right. Even he himself admits that the Bible says that homosexuality is sin. A homosexual who gives his life to Christ can go to heaven. But if you are still living in that sin, you cannot go to heaven. We need to stop breaking this thing down and stop confusing people who don't know too much about the scriptures. You cannot live in homosexuality and tell me you're going to heaven. You are a liar. You won't. You have to turn from your wicked ways. Accept Christ. And he will help you to make it to heaven. It's not by changing what is written People in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah tried to do these things. They tried to change the scriptures. They tried to change the narrative. It did not save them. The fire still came and burned down the city and the sinful people that overwhelmed it. That same God has not changed. He's still the same God today. We need to have the fear of God as we do this nonsense. All of this is pushing us gradually towards 
one world religion and to prove to you that this era, this very moment, is the time of the one world religion. I want you to listen, and I've shown this video before, to what happened when the 117th Congress opened with a prayer by a congressman. Listen to his prayer. This was before Joe Biden was inaugurated as president. This same Congress is the Congress he's going to be working with. And they openly, on a global stage, recognized and affirmed the one world religion. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and God known by many names, by many different faiths. A man and a woman. This was a clear sign that your one world religion is now born on the global stage. So almost everything you're going to see from now on is going to reflect this massive PR stunt that they are going to launch globally to actually convince the whole world into buying this lie that the one world religion is what we should be embracing at this time. You don't believe me? Okay, let me play you this video. Listen to how the man who prayed during Joe Biden's inauguration ended his prayers. To your glory, majesty, dominion and power forever. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. In the strong name of our collective faith. Amen. In the strong name of our collective faith. Amen. The Bible says at the mention of his name, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow of things in earth and underneath, and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. At the name of Jesus, at the name of Yeshua, that's the only name we've been given through which we can make prayers and supplications. No other name. And now we're here in the name of our collective faith. By the way, your collective faith is neither a being or a thing. It is an expression. So who or what is collective faith? Where does it reside? Where, what, where is the address of collective faith? What does collective faith look like? just so that they don't mention the name of Christ because the whole attack is on the Son of God. The whole attack began with a common word between us and you and then removing the name Yeshua or Jesus Christ from every single discussion that has to do with the one world religion because he has been the major, major stumbling block to the formation of the one world religion. So the moment we can delete him, remove him from the equation, then, then leave whatever you call God there so everybody can come under that umbrella. They remove Christ. Then everybody's going to be okay. You see, in the name of our collective faith, when he says collective faith, you notice that the guy who prayed to open the 117th Congress prayed in the name of all those collective faiths and mentioned the ones he could mention. And he now said collective faith. Let me now show you something that happened. And this was Florida City Council. They prayed in the name of Satan and Allah and so many other gods at the same. That's what they mean when they say collective faith. I want you to listen to this. Our collective atheism, which is to say, loving empathy, scientific evidence, and critical thinking, leads us to believe that we can create a better, more equal community without religious divisions. May we pray together. Mother Earth, we gather today in your redeeming and glorious presence to invoke your eternal guidance in the universe, the original creator of all things. May the efforts of this council blend the righteousness of Allah with the all-knowing wisdom of Satan. 
May Zeus, the great God of justice, grant us strength tonight. Jesus might forgive our, our shortcomings, while Buddha enlightens us through his divine affection. We praise you, Krishna, for the sanguine sacrifice that freed us all. After all, if Almighty Thor is with us, who can ever be against us? And finally, for the bounty of logic, reason, and science, we simply thank the atheists, agnostics, humanists, who now account for one in five Americans, and growing rapidly. In closing, let us, above all, love one another, not to obtain mythical rewards for ourselves now, hereafter, or based on superstitious threats of eternal damnation, but rather embrace secular-based principles of morality and do good, for goodness sake. And so we prayed, so what? Superstitious threats of eternal damnation be prayed in the name of Satan, Krishna, Allah, Buddha, everyone. And so we prayed, so what? Because he's already prayed in the names of the other ones. And so we pray. So what? There's another closing now they have. So what? That's closing of a prayer. This is the word we have uh, now begun to live in. This is our word right now. In case you're still sleeping, you better wake up. From my heart. I appeal to you, wake up, like for real, wake up. This is not going to go the way many people who are very like a days ago think it's going to go. This is going to go very badly. Because every time I speak on these issues, the thing that worries me the most is the fact that too many Christians are grossly ill-prepared for what is coming. I know that for a fact. Look, we're here now. We're now going back. One word religion. Watch out, like I told you, the amount of money they're going to invest in PR stunts to promote one word religion in different shapes, in different sizes, in different forms. They will make it so appealing. Of course, you know they've already used the media you know, in such a way that the media has mind control so many people. A lot of people now trust the mainstream media so much that even if they tell them to kill themselves, they would do it. So you can imagine how powerful the tool they have over so many people is now. So they're going to use that tool to sell you one world religion. You're going to see real Christians doubting their own faith. Saying, well, I think this will actually tell him the truth. How can you possibly say that Christ is the only way? No, I am not saying it. It's in the Bible. That's why we all need to go back to the Bible. Begin to read your Bible with your family. Read it to yourself. Read it in your study groups. Read your Bible. The moment they can get you not to open their Bible, they have finished you. One word religion is a religion of the Antichrist. Again, go to Revelation chapter 13. It's there. It's there. The beast out of the sea and the beast out of the earth. One is in charge of the global government, global reset, and the other is in charge of the one word religion. The ecumenism that you'll be hearing of. Ecumenical centers that you see them building all over the place. I talked about this in most of my videos. Different locations, different regions, Africa, Asia, you're going to see their representatives springing up more now. All of them, even the ones that have been hiding, you're going to hear more of their names now. You're going to see a communical centers, massive cathedrals, built in different state capitals, nation capitals. And people are going to be encouraged to worship together. Muslim, Hindu, Christian, come together. Let's worship. We only worship one God. No, we don't worship one God. I worship the God of the Bible. If you don't stand your ground now, you will have not a single ground to stand on very soon. 
May that not be our portion and may the Lord give us the grace to withstand the evils of these terrifyingly evil days. Amen.